Operation Nation. Hello, Lee Kemp here for another week on the podcast. Here with my very good friends, Jose Moya, Ryan Boniface. How are we doing this week, guys? Thank you, mate. Yeah, good. Thanks, Lee, mate. Yeah. Glad to hear it. Thank you, everyone out there, for listening, uh, watching us on YouTube. Join us live if you are on TikTok. J Noya underscore Inspiration Nation each and every Tuesday, give or take about six o'clock. Joe will let you know when we're going on. Appreciate the interaction from everyone that wants to get involved with the podcast. And of course, on Twitter, listen to YN at listen T O I N. Right. I was the dutiful master of ceremonies last week with the subject. Who is up this week, guys? You've got the special will, mate. You tell us. <laughs> Hold on. But last, week, last week it was the pickle, wasn't it? Pickle? And that's the wheel. Oh, what's going on? I'm confused. Oh, yeah, you did call it the pickle of... of um... Yeah, but I've drawn a line onto that now. I'm trying to be more professional. And you're okay. dragging me down to your unprofessional level. Oh, go on in. Let's, I'll wheel it back out. I'm going to wheel it back out. Hold on. And I'm going to turn the wheel. Okay. 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 It's like, imagine like a wheel of fortune wheel. That's what it's like. And it's just, it's, it's, it's... I can't remember. I'm going to say Ryan. It is me, yeah. Yay! Yay! What have uh, you got for us this week? So Mr. I've not, Boniface? I've not cleared this subject with the two of you. Usually, we try and stay away from um, current affairs, but uh, I'm going to talk about the obvious. Um, we're British, we're English, um, but our Queen died last week, which I'm sure is not news to anyone now. Especially for listening to podcasts, it means you probably heard it fifteen thousand times. Um, and um, I want to talk about a few things about it. One, how you guys feel. Two, how you guys think that you should feel, because mine differ. Um, and I also want to talk about kind of how things have to happen as a result of this. I think bad. I don't talk about anything derogative, but as an example, I put on the radio uh, Friday morning um, and the songs were, they have to play a certain manner of song. I don't know if you know that, but they have to play what is classed as sad music. They're not allowed to play anything necessarily upbeat, not allowed to play anything that has swearing in it, which I know radios don't anyway, but they blur that out. They're not allowed to play any songs like that. Um, And in the UK, we entered 12 days of mourning, which um, conclude Monday coming with uh, her queen's, the Queen's funeral. Now, I wouldn't class myself as a royalist, but I wouldn't class myself as anti-monarchy or an, an anti-monarchist or however, whatever that, that, that title is. Um, Republican. Sure. Um, I like the Netflix series The Crown. I don't know if you two have watched it, but actually, it's it's it gives uh, a fictional but entertaining grasp of the non-fictional storyline of Her Majesty's uh, reign. Basically, there's a new series that's due to drop perhaps in six weeks, but I think I saw a news line that said that they're um, holding back on filming and production as a mark of respect to her death, which I think was pretty obvious and was coming, but. So, yes, I wouldn't class myself as a royalist. But I wouldn't class myself as an anti-royalist. You know, I, I, to be honest, people live their own lives. That's like saying I'm, a, I'm for Lee or anti-Lee. I wouldn't want him to be thrown out of his house if I was anti-Lee, right? So, to me, it works the same way. A lot of people aren't happy with the fact that they take taxpayer money. My argument that I see a lot or, or think of a lot is how much money they make from tourism when people come to Buckingham Palace and buy things in London as a result of going to Buckingham Palace, right? That and the money isn't actually theirs and all the jewels and stuff isn't actually theirs, blah, blah, blah. blah. There's loads of weird law and history around that kind of thing. But I found myself kind of, not sad is the wrong word, but I think down when the news had broke that she had died. I think I think a lot of people kind of were like, oh, it's the end of an era. You kind of feel like it's your own grandmother that died. I did anyway. I felt like, you know, not not that I was heartbroken or crying or anything like that, but like you just, or maybe not your grandmother, but perhaps the old lady that lived next door, maybe she's died. And you just kind of think, oh, that's sad for Joan next door. I don't know. Um, 
a lot of people were saying, well, she has no benefit to our lives, so we shouldn't really feel sad about it, et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of other people, you know, were heartbroken. A lot of people have, uh, was, well, I saw a video of a lot of people singing the national anthem outside Buckingham Palace and things like that. So obviously it's affected people in different ways. And I was just curious as to kind of what you guys thought about it. Yeah, I think this is a big one. Um, it's very topical, clearly. And I'm a little bit in the middle with it. I'm a bit with you, Ryan. Um, when the news came out, the first thing that came to mind is that I was just gone. But the second thing is that it reminded me of my mum. Yeah. And I could resonate with, you know, Charles and the family around the loss of a human being that's very close to them. So from that point of view, it is sad. And actually, when they showed the Paddington sketch, I actually had a tear in my eye because it almost like was like she was saying goodbye in that sketch where, you know, Panabe says thank you, doesn't he, in that in that sketch. And um, yeah, so even now I'm getting a bit emotional, like I feel tingles going on. And so for me, in that respect, yeah, it's sad. But on the other hand, you know, in terms of monarchy and all that, like I don't really have a view on it. All I know is I, I grew up with the Queen and it's, she's always been a constant in my life. So the 1970s onwards... And I've not known anyone else. This is a really historic point. And it is part of it is part of the culture. But I've spoken to people like yourself where people say, let's, let's, let's abolish the monarchy and have a Republican state. Republic state. Um, I'm not sure about that. I'm still not sure. But I think what's going to happen is as we go through this motion of the kings coming through, there's going to be a conversation that people have. I quite like it, but I know I do know there's all the negativity around it as well. Are you the you know all the um, colonias, col is it colonial colon colonialism, all that well, sort of stuff? Third time lucky. Is that right? I've got to ask. Just struggling to get out. Uh, so all that, and there's also you know all the thing about you know apparently I didn't know if this is right or not, but apparently there's no inheritance tax going to be paid on the estate when it passes over to Charles. All that sort of stuff. Uh, but again, they bring in probably a lot of tourism is part of our culture. I enjoyed the crown. I enjoyed that. Um, you know, I remember Princess Diana. I remember all those. I remember the time when Princess Diana passed away. I was actually in bed early in the morning, and I got, "Is that really happening?" Um, but I really felt that moment when she passed. You know, the Queen passed again. It just because the same year my mum passed away. So, in terms of the human side, I think I feel sad. But in terms of the monarchy and stuff, do I feel sad? I don't really know. Not really. Um, I think it's got part of our heritage and our history. And I'm actually learning more about history now than I ever did because of everything that's going on. And I'm really fascinated by all the, like you said, the rules and the regulation and uh, and the old type, uh, you know, customs that I never knew existed until now. So I think that's quite fascinating. So I find that quite interesting. I'm really open to it. So I'm open to both sides. And would I want to lose all that? I'm not sure because I think there's something, by sure. doing all these things, I think there's something... Uh, almost like it's not doesn't feel real but it's like it's like you'd see it in a film but it's reality do you know what i mean yeah. it feels like it feels something it feels like something special like this you know if we didn't have a monarchy or whatever you wouldn't have any of this uh, you know but this feels a little bit like that so that's my view on it but you know i i'm just taking it as i go but i don't really feel like oh monarchy i feel like for me it's like it's sad that this lovely person that made mistakes that we know there's a lot of controversy about the things that she did you know, things about Prince Andrew, for instance, all that sort of stuff. But at the end of the day, it's a human being. So we all make mistakes, all that stuff. Uh, and I think she just did her best while she was here. And she did not, she did, she did a pretty good job. I think you born into it. It's a pretty tough job to do. You never get away from the public eye and all your family washing is all out just for everybody to see. So it's a bloody hard job. I wouldn't want it, uh, but you're born into it and you can abdicate, but you're still in the public eye. You can't get away from it. So, for me, um, sad that she's passed because it's, you know, for Prince Charles and the family is a human element. But the other side of the coin, I'm thinking it's going to be something that people talk about. Uh, I think what you're talking about, about, you know, whether, whether it's still relevant and all that. And I think Charles is going to have a big, big job on his hands with that. But anyway, I'm passing the, the pickle over to Lee. Well, before yeah, Lee, before Lee dives in, right. there's, all right, a couple cool. of, there's a couple of bits I want to um, not address, but kind of talk cool. about. I'm not a royal historian by any way, shape or form. Mm. I don't think they pay inheritance tax because, again, it's not her money. I think okay. The money, the, the, the estates and the, the the crowns and yes, they live a life of luxury, obviously, but it, it, it's not 
hers the money never belongs to her and the estates never belong to her and buckingham palace doesn't belong to her it's it's there's a weird there's going to be somebody somewhere that's going to explain it worlds better than i (laughs) but they're they're hers but they're not hers if that makes sense i'm not quite i think that might be what it is i'm not yeah i'm not quite sure either um there's a couple of other bits as well again i'm not a royal historian and the colonization factor is a big one but I also believe that she's the head of thousands of charities across the Commonwealth that actually aid people. And I actually think she was part of the reason the British Empire actually completely finished as a ruling as a ruling party. She gave she gave democracy in a lot of Commonwealth countries that didn't have it before. I remember from the Crown there was definitely one in the in the Dominican Republic that she gave gave it to. And I believe she also did it in Australia as well. I could be wrong, but Yes, you know, as you say, she's born into it, and five hundred years ago, people weren't people weren't speaking out against Henry the Eighth chopping wives' heads off. So times change, things change. You know, the, the, things are all, or you know, things are never good, and she can't control what her children do either. Um, in this, she can't. It's diff- she again, as you say, she's born into it, and all of her decisions are scrutinized. The Prince Andrew thing, she couldn't get right or wrong, whatever way she looks at it, in a way. There's ways that I'm sure a lot of people would say she should have dealt with things, but there'll be reasons why she didn't that we'll never know. At the end of the day, they're also a family. Um, and a lot of people forgive a lot of things from people in their own families, let alone the fact that they're a royal family and in, and in the public eye. Um, the other thing I was going to pick up on I've actually really liked enjoying watching all of the stuff that Charles has to go through. The proclamation I watched on Saturday morning where he where he announced the bank holiday for next Monday and things like that and get to sign the documents and um travel to Parliament yesterday and, and gave them a speech and all that kind of stuff. It's just things that for the vast majority of the population have never seen before because the Queen ruled for seventy years, right? But the vast, vast majority of people don't even know this exists. And it's only happened twice in the last 100 years, I think, with her father as well. It'd probably be somebody else before him, because I believe his brother abdicated. But yeah, I I just think that there's... Entertainment is the wrong word, but there's stuff to learn and stuff to take in as a result. But yes, Lee's been left Lee very quiet today. Just take this and a uh, few comments on tiktok to call out strange monkey talking about the fact that it's a huge change for society overall and we've made a comment about um i saw an effect made a comment about um there'll be strange seeing charles's face on banknotes and i think there's at one mm. level there's that background bit of all of this that like we've, we've alluded a few times but the majority of people alive given how long the which was on the throne before have known nothing other than that queen. I mean, between Victoria 1901, I think it was, or 1903, or something about then, until Elizabeth, there was like four or five. And then, you know, people have seen multiple um, deaths and, and abdication in there. But then it's, it's all we've known. So, you know, phone post boxes, phone boxes, police helmets, all have ER on them. Which is gonna which would change. Mm, I mean, phone I boxes that, not so much yeah. because you know so many of them, but yeah, post boxes certainly. Banknotes. I mean, I was in the shop today mm. getting something, and they had a sign on the the counter just reminding people that the paper twenty pound note will go out of circulation in whenever it is. I don't know. No one uses paper money anymore or plastic money. It's all cards. But I was that made me think. Well, actually, all of those plastic twenty pound notes that have been issued are all going to be out of circulation in another few years as they run this all through. So there's just all these things. And that's just there. That's always the face that will be different now. That it's just a background thing. But it's so many things. When, as a society, we've gone through so many changes in the last five years, it's unreal. And this is another monumental thing that, that's happening on top of that. That's, like I said, it happens, but it's not happened for so long. It's, it's that gravity of thing. Um, and at the other end of the, the, the personality thing, and like you said, Ryan, how you feel about it. For me... Same you. I mean, I I was never against the royal family. Um, bit they don't affect me day to day. We do have a democracy. It brings in tourism. It's a you know, it's an institution of the country. I I'm no expert on this from a financial thing. I'm pretty sure that 
all their investments and land bring in the money that they take their allowance, if you like, from, and then the rest of it goes into the government's pot. So I think they actually put money in rather than take money out. People then say, well, it's not their stuff, but they inherited it. I know, you know, there's loads of people who inherit money who don't earn it. Um, Fulham FC, it's owned by a guy called Tony Khan, who's bought it with his dad's money. Um, does that mean he shouldn't own the football club now because he didn't earn the money and it was his dad's? I just, I, I don't agree necessarily with just that whole inherited thing and everything like that. So, and, and I don't think it's factually correct that they take taxpayers' money. It's a much more complex situation. But I just personally have no bones growing. I completely get um, the Republican argument and why people feel that way about things as well, and it being an outdated institution, all of that. So I'm not. I'm not siding for either side. I just personally don't have a dog in a hunt on it. And then having watched, like you guys alluded to with the crown, because I, you know, I was born in 1982. The Queen was old then. Obviously, was she was a lot older now when she passed, but it it was just a thing. I didn't really know anything about them or what they've been through, anything like that. And I watching the crown gave me a real affinity for them as people and what they've been through and the life of service that they do not get to choose. And even less so for the Queen, she wasn't even born into it. She was never in that. She was in her teenage years when it got thrust upon her when it had got moved in. So there's there's all of that in, in play as well. And I think it was, I saw there's one of the, the pictures that's doing around on social media is her and Paddington walking off and it's like, I've done my duties now. And I think that that sums up what her life was. It was a life of, do you know, whether you agree with the need for that or not, is a separate thing. She didn't get to choose to be whatever she wanted to be and do what she wanted to be and see who she wanted to see. It was, this is your, you know, your life of service on a com- for a country that she didn't even run because there's an elected government. So I have a lot of respect for that. Um, and then there's a, this, I suppose, the celebrity bit about it as well. Now we all get this. We all have affinities with different people in sports movies tv music reality tv whatever it is that you will watch have different meanings for you and i know i've had this before when someone dies from something you have a personal connection with you feel that at at different levels um and you know the younger people are the more shocking i know the queen was older and it was it will help have been known to as expected but at the same point she's been that fixture in life that i still feel that level of celebrity sorrow i'd feel with other people that i you know that have inspired me in one way or another or you have an affinity with or you or you know about and then just seeing like i watched yesterday the thing in in scotland where they were um i am get all the words wrong but they were with you know people coming to pay their respects and they were all standing around um the coffin and everything and you could see the sadness in all of their eyes as they stood there doing the duty and like charles gave up to give a speech and you could see the redness in his eyes when he was talking and this is for whatever else this is someone whose mum's died two years ago now doing the most public important thing he's ever done so he's not allowed they, to they, mourn though is he that's that's the other side you can't you can't publicly cry no. right so he has to go out there and basically take his mum's job without feeling sad that his mum <laughs> died see, you can publicly, see him trying right? to hold that back and and with all of them as well when they're doing it and it's you know, yeah, again, from watching the crown, you know that whilst you know dysfunctional in and out and whatever, all they really had was each other, and a central part of that's just been taken away from them. And that's on a personal level, you feel sad for that. I think as you get older, you feel more sadness of things like this anyway. So there's all those, there's that sort of level, just on a human to human, like you said, Ryan Joe next door. I think there's that celebrity mourning bit, which loads of people have had for loads of different people they've got affinities with. For, for whatever different reason um and then you've got the the huge society change that comes with it that is just thrust upon us that things that you might not even appreciate a little comfortable things are, are changing change can affect you subconsciously in the most strange ways and i just think at different degrees loads of people will be feeling that in loads of different ways yeah yeah i think um what was I going to say? Yeah, and there'll be people that will listen to this and say they live a life of luxury as well. They get they get so much given to them and things like that, which which is true, completely true. But it doesn't make them live happy lives. It doesn't um, it doesn't change the fact that a great grandmother, a grandmother, and a mother has died, right? Uh, ahead of a family or ahead of 
you know, a nation and a commonwealth as well, right? So it's it's hard for them, I imagine, to sit and talk to the public and hear them say how sorry they are that, that so-and-so or the Queen has died, should I say, and for them to not feel crestfallen as a result. Um, that doesn't mean that that doesn't mean because they have nice things and he's going to go and sit on a gold throne and, and have a crown put on his head that everything make, gets made feel better. It doesn't, does it? As you know, we've all suffered loss and things like that. So we, we understand that, but yeah, I just, I, I just think it's, it's going to be a big thing now for the next, probably the next two or three years that we have a King. Um, and it could even be the case that, that King Charles could die in the next five years as well. You know, he's he's of an age that uh, an illness or an ailment could could come of him that that ends his life as well. And then before you know it, by the by the time twenty thirty rolls round, we've got um, Prince William on the throne. So it's it's you know it's a, it's an ever changing world, and with a lot of these things. You know, I, I don't wish to speak ill of anything, but a lot of these things are a bit like buses, right? They don't necessarily come for a long time, and then all of a sudden, two or three come around in a in a short space of time. And you know, this this element of change, and as Lee alluded to, this this monumental change of our of our dynamic could happen again in the next five, ten, fifteen years. Um, it's certainly not going to be another seventy years unless he lives to be one hundred and thirty or one hundred and forty years old. I'm not quite sure how old. Um, the king is but it's um yeah it's definitely a, a a time where people aren't aren't quite sure how to feel i think um and yeah as you say everything's going to change money post boxes telephone boxes the labels of of you ever see you ever get something from a shop um i always think of golden syrup and it has oh, yeah, the, yeah. it has their her, her crest on it says the this is yeah. yeah this is basically what the queen uses when she has golden syrup and some of those might change because charles might have a, an affliction to something else i'm sure it probably won't because i'm sure they probably get paid some money to have that put on there themselves so it's just you know every, say everything's going to change it for, for people that are of my age you know i've lived through um, a change of monarchy now which i probably my previous generation didn't generations before having it back perhaps then. yeah my grandmother was two years old when the queen came um to the throne so yeah perhaps two generations before i haven't said that we've had a, a global pandemic which is unprecedented for the last 100 years um you know we had the rise of the internet which is not something that's ever happened before yes technology advanced in that time perhaps it was your generation guys or the ones before you that first experienced cars on a common basis as as regular motorized transport How um, do you think we are? <laughs> that aside, yeah. well no as a as an accessible thing right maybe 50 years ago it was only really a rich rich person's thing that had to have a car well we definitely 50, had cars. 60 years ago really definitely had cars i had cars my understanding of modern history didn't have a terrible. horse yeah, yeah, it, had no horses no horses but we definitely had cars <laughs> yeah okay I said, I said the generation, but I said the generations before you, the generation before you guys. To be fair, I used um, to go out of like my sword and shield and fight in the in the fields. How did you survive? <laughs> Touche. Um, you know, we've we've lived through a lot of we've lived through a lot of things, and things happened all the time, right? I mean, probably more Joe's time than Lee's, but there was um, Chernobyl. That was that was probably a mass a mass thing in the in the mid eighties. I remember that. It was. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, the I remember rise. That. Yeah, I do the, remember that. The rise and the fall. Being of... on the news. Yeah. Yeah. So you then, had World uh, War One, American War of Independence. Oh, Joe did live for a monarchy change then. Here we go. Here we go. Um, <laughs> this is the Uncle Joe reference. Now we got we got the father and son. They're going, oh, Uncle Joe, just stick him in the corner with his beer. That's what it is, isn't it? <laughs> You're old enough to be Lee's uncle, aren't you? You're my great uncle. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I actually yeah, think my dad's younger than you, Jay. I don't know. True. I don't know your dad. That's got to be. I don't know how old you both are. That's not true. You're telling me stuff, and I don't know. Um, 
but you know you had the rise and the fall of of what was the USSR right and the and the yeah. German wall and things Cold like that war, and... yeah. I was talking about this yesterday and obviously it's not something directly influenced but the world in which she started to where we are now is people bought their first television sets to be able to watch yeah. the coronation and the fact it was uh, on TV that. was mm. monumental and yeah. You look at the coverage now of what's happening and the technology we're in, and it, you know you can literally watch the whole thing happen as it's happening. That's and that's Philip's that's, idea that's as well. Right? To hear. That's all happened within. Yeah, that was. I'm pretty sure I remember watching the Crown. That was Prince Philip's idea to get to get the the adoration of the of the people, right? Um. Then you come into kind of what is. What would be Lee's Lee's life site time, and you had what nine eleven, which was the other day, and um, the Iraq War, and starting to gauge oh, into yeah. my 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 territory a bit after that, I think, because I don't think we're that far apart, are we? But um, Lee lived through th- the TV series Friends. I don't know if people of my age will know what that is these days. Um, I do. I'm joking. Not that. It's not that outdated. I still watch it regularly. Joe had Dallas. Oh, remember that. We used to sit around the TV and wait for that to come on. That was a weekly event, that was. Um, but yeah, it's just every Who's generation are you in? <laughs> Every generation goes through these monumental events and they just feel like they get more and more monumental each time. The obvious one is COVID, right? But they just feel like they, they expand what was one nuclear bomb in... in um, oh, now I said it about five minutes ago. You know what I mean. Um, where was it? Where was this? World War Two? No, 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 no. I'm not thinking of Hiroshima. I'm thinking of what Chernobyl. I said a minute ago. Chernobyl. Oh, Chernobyl. Chernobyl. That's it. Sorry. Yes. Chernobyl. My mind went blank. You've gone from that to weapons of mass destruction and um, wars all over, you know, North Africa and Southeast Europe and all of these places and. Um, I think you just I think as you get older you just become more aware of it and its impact. I think as you, when you're younger you just accept everything for what it is and then I think as you get older you become more aware of the influence this, and the change and the impact of things. This is another point that I could probably turn into a whole other podcast, right? But um most people in the UK will probably be a part of a Facebook page that surrounds their local community that talks about crap basically. Uh who let their dog crap on this road and who parks here it's terrible. Well, I'm sure all three of us are aware of this. Um I often see news articles of things happening, you know, perhaps an attack or a robbery or a break in somewhere. And it's like, what's happened to the world these days? And I could talk about this for a whole podcast. Not much different than 30 years ago. It's just you're so much more accessible to finding the information now because you have newspapers that are online. You've got TV news. You've got Facebook that tells you. You've got Twitter that can tell you. You've got all these places that will feed you this information about your local area. Of course you're going to hear about it doesn't mean to say it wasn't happening 30 years ago it just means it's more in your face now because people have a means to tell you doesn't yeah. mean to say that things aren't worse now than what they were before i never lived 30 years ago nearly so i don't know but you know what i mean it doesn't mean it doesn't mean to say that these things are worse now it's just that they're more readily seen now yeah but i think pin that one Ryan, because I do think yeah. that is a good one to expand out on. Time limits come up, so I'm yeah. going to. I'm going to. I just need it, to. But I, I think just be a great subject. I just want to add go, one, go, my takeaway before I forget. Uh, so a couple of things, just quickly, was one thing: time never stops, no matter what event happens. That's one thing that you know people think. Oh, you know, someone significant has passed away. Like my mum passed away, the world doesn't stop. The Queen passed away, the world doesn't stop. It continues on. Time just goes on, and we have to find some way. And and uh, the inspirational message that I'm taking from this because it's you know is that one is that the queen did like from a human perspective a life of service like lee said she was born into something and she just took it up and ran with it and did it no matter what happened she just did her best and then we got prince charles having to give speeches i couldn't imagine doing that when my mum passed away like a day or two afterwards to have to give those speeches i tried to give my, a speech at my mum's funeral which was probably a week or two ar- two after, and I broke down in tears just trying to do that speech. So, yeah, that's inspirational for me that, that human beings are capable of these things 
And I suspect, you know, in private, he is breaking down and stuff like that. But to be actually do that in public and not break down for me shows the strength of character. Irrespective of what you think about the monarchy, you've got to respect the strength that these people show in times of difficulty. And what Ryan said about problems, yes, they may have a life of luxury, but it doesn't, it does, every, every human being has got a problem. It's going to be a different type of problem. It's still going to be difficult. There's still going to be issues. So that for me is the sort of takeaways that I'm taking away. So Lee, I'll hand it back over to you. I just want to get that before I forget. Ryan, with your subject, what are your takeaways or key messages? It's okay to not know how to feel about things like this. I like that. That's a very good one. And I think it, and it, it, I'm so leaning on for that. It's just go with the moment. Just what are you feeling in that moment? And it's okay. And I was thinking about the show is things do move on um, and things do carry on, even if it feels, you know, difficult or hopeless at, at, at any given time. But this is, you know, this is again another monumental change we're going through. And I think we've shown individually and collectively how resilient we all are. And I'm sure that will happen here again. Out of respect, I'm not going to do any shameless shilling this week. We'll save this for next week. Everyone knows where to go. Um, really good. I'm glad that this is what we talked about, right? I think it's very good. Um, so usually we, we stay away from topics like these, don't we? Yeah, but it's good. Just I think it's to, good. I think, yeah. yeah, I think we should. It's, it's part of the life, isn't it? It's part of, Yeah. it's almost like the journal and, and you know, part of it. And the podcast is here to, 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 to talk about it. Great. Yeah. Thank everyone out there on the podcast players and on YouTube. We'll be back again next week. I will count us down. Three, two, one. Inspiration, Inspiration Nation. Nation. Catch you guys later. Catch you guys later. later. So I want to know now, what's your biggest takeaway? Don't forget to hashtag it with Inspiration Nation in the comments below and make sure you commit to action. Thank you for checking out. So don't forget to catch all our other Inspiration Nation podcast episodes right over here. So go check them out. And also, don't forget to subscribe because that will tell you when your next video goes live by you hitting that amazing bell. So until next time, it's Inspiration Nation, and I'll see you right over there.